Good afternoon, brothers and sisters in Christ. Do I have your attention, please? We of the Anglican Church in the Diocese of Trinidad and Tobago 
Parish Church of St. Paul, City of San Fernando, welcome you. Please pay close attention to this announcement. It is provided for your safety awareness. We are all seated and facing east. We have no planned drills today. Your safety is of our greatest importance. Take a moment to familiarize yourself with the person next to you or in close proximity to you. For this event, that person is your body. The body system is in, goes into effect. Should there be an emergency which requires emergency evacuation, an assembly at the muster points are important. Muster point one, to the northeastern side of the church building, which is in front of the old rectory to my right. The second one is in City Square, Harris Promenade to my left, in front of the bandstand. Exit signs are posted at all the doors, which are <coughs> to your left and right. Should there be need for any evacuation, please follow the lead of the ushers present. Face masks are optional. Hand hygiene, ushers would provide hand sanitizers for you as you process to receive the sacrament. You may choose to use your own. Greetings of peace may be exchanged with due care and attention and with respect for others and their privacy. Restroom facilities, male and female, are located on the ground floor to my right. Access to these facilities via the northbound exit to the staircase along the Lady Chapel. Contact books. We hereby request that you enter or cause your name. The contact books is not necessary at this point in time. We encourage those using the restroom facilities, especially children and females and senior citizens, do not do this alone. Thank you for your adherence to our safety policy. This service is about to begin. Please silence all mobile phones. We hope that we bring comfort to you an upliftment to one and all. Thank you, friends, for our errands. Please stand.
we receive the body of our sister Karen for burial. Our sister was washed in holy baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father, the giver of life, that He will release His perfection and accompany the saints. The Lord be with you and the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, grace and glory, remember before you this day of Sister Karen. We thank you for giving good to us, our family, and friends, to know the Lord as a companion on our daily pilgrimage. In your marvelous compassion, console us, O oh Lord. Give us faith to see in death the gain of eternal life, so that with quiet confidence we may continue our course of truth. Until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me though he died, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Respect us, love the Lord, and ceases his compassion in your fears every morning that we are in you. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. I will show that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor anything else nor all creation will separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. We brought nothing into this world, but we take nothing out. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The eternal words of refuge and the belief and the everlasting promise. Please be seated. She arrived as a new little sister to Brenda, Cheryl, and Neil, who's deceased, and eventually became the big sister to Dillis, Ursel, and myself. Karen's early childhood unfolded in the vibrant community of Forest Reserve, Faisabad, a loving home with many treasured memories, playing games and swinging in the yard the neighborhood kids. The memories of Karen from her younger siblings can only describe as her as a mischievous girl, always up to no good. At the tender age of six, Karen convinced her sister Dillis that eating bird peppers was a brilliant idea. A moment that made a lasting impression upon Dillis. To this day, Dillis does not eat pepper. Scarred for life. Her cunning wit didn't stop there. During her childhood cricket matches, where she would persuade her youngest sister, Ursel, to run through the picker patch just to get the ball so the game can be continued. By the time Karen was 13, the family had moved to Coconut Drive, where her life truly began to flourish. She would join the Coconut Drive youth group, 
where she came to know other teenagers within the area. Here, Karen would meet her long-life friend, Nicole. The pair lovingly compared to as the Lone Ranger and Tonto. Inseparable and always up to shenanigans. A beautiful friendship that has lasted the test of time and distance. As a teenager, Karen was an active student. She loved playing sports, but her zeal for the game of netball was unquestionable. A well-rounded student, she remained involved in community initiatives, such as President's Awards, earning both bronze and silver awards. Education was a powerful tool to Karen, something that she continuously pursued throughout her life. After studying at A8AT in London, Karen continued to sharpen her skills with the ACCCA. Dozens of courses between, in between, and it led to her doing her, a master's program post-retirement. Karen went on to, to get married, and although the marriage ended, being the type of person she was, she and Gregory were able to maintain a respectful and warm relationship, and together successfully co-parent their two children, Kieran and Karsten, who were undoubtedly two of the most important persons in her life. A mother's love that truly knew no bounds. Karen was their number one supporter, and like herself, she encouraged and supported them in school activities, sports, and business. Some of Karen's favorite memories would be bonding over some of her favorite music on their way home. It was these special moments they looked forward to every day. Kieran and even his own son, Kijana, would inherit the mischievous charm, something they all had in common as children. She always saw the humor in Kieran's tricks as a child and would hysterically laugh alongside Kijana because he reminded her of Kieran as a child. Their playfulness and unique sense of humor is something that the three would share a love language that no one else can understand. At home, living alongside sisters Dillis, Ursel, and niece Tanika, there are so many memories in the kitchen with Karen. From Saturday afternoons, she kneaded and baked bread to Christmas mornings, playing her favorite tunes, eating raisins while dancing and cooking, and yes, the music from her extended playlist of the songs from, of the 70s to the 90s could be heard emitting from wherever Karen laid her head. Karen loved her family across borders and made sure that no matter how far away you are, she would want you to know how important you are. Elders, sisters Brenda and Cheryl could always rely on Karen especially when their children, Brendan, Bevan, and Saray, would visit Trinidad. She looked forward to planning family events, traveling across the world to China, to be there in support of her brother, myself, getting married. She would then extend her love even further by planning a family reunion here in Trinidad so that the Celestin Taylor family could meet my new family. According to Cheryl, Karen was a phenomenal woman, a truly, a true mother, loving, enduring, kind, protective, strong, extraordinary, intuitive, and mindful. A loyal sister, supportive, caring, dependable, a trustworthy friend, an inspirational boss, putting others before herself. A loyal friend to many, Karen created a safe space for the friends she made throughout the different phases of her life. 
and still maintain the deep bonds and strong relationships, even from her days at St. Peter's in Point of Pair. That was the kind of person she was. Friends found it easy opening up to her to speak truthfully and freely. These unique traits would attract loyal friends, Ron and Annette, two people Karen who made an impact on her life and whom she would forever be grateful to having by her side. A very intelligent woman, she used her God-given talents to open her own business. Being the person she was, she supported many friends and family along the way with financial and business advice. While throughout her life, Karen faced her own challenges. She entrusted every decision to God, leaving no room for ill intentions. No matter the challenge she faced, she still managed to put others before herself. Karen touched countless lives with her guidance and compassion and expressed her love to others with her acts of kindness and genuinely wanted the best for everyone in her life. It is difficult to find words to describe the force that was Casey. To those whose lives were blessed by her presence, she made a lasting impression that left us with warm, loving memories. A woman of unfavoring, wavering faith, she always put God first, followed closely by her children, family, and close friends. Today, as we bid farewell to Karen, let us remember her infectious laughter, her zest for life, her aura of calmness and serenity, and her smile, warm smile. Let us fondly remember the spark of the light that was Karen. May her life inspire us all to live fearlessly, faithfully, love wholeheartedly, and embrace every moment. Rest in peace, dear Karen. We will love and miss you always. Good afternoon, everyone. Karen's family, my second family. I'm Nicole. While researching the definition of the word friend, I came upon these words on the internet that is the personifies Karen. And here they are. A deep and meaningful connection between an individual based on mutual respect, trust, support, and understanding. This definition goes on to say that a true friend is someone who stands by you in good times and bad, who accepts you for who you are and genuinely cares about your care being. While on the subject of definitions, I settled on this one, and this is Karen, my friend, for 50 years, who I met during the organization of the Coconut Drive Youth Group. There, we made, fr we made friends, lots of friends who were growing up, and it was boring in Coconut Drive. We would sit and quietly plan activities, little shenanigans, we'll research scripts to, rel to relate to our parents that we knew would allow us to go on our teenage adventures. And here's an example. We began most of the scripts like this. And this is me speaking. Karen, you want to go so-and-so? We can ask Ronald. That's my big brother. And then I, in turn, will go and cajole Ronald to go with, take us 
And I would say to Ronald, hey, if you come, you could meet some of my next friends. Of course, Karen, on the other side, will go to her parents, and she'll say, um, Ronald and Nicole, they're going to this party or this affair, and Mr. and Mrs. Peters gave their permission, and Ronald is going to take us there, and Ronald is going to bring us back home. It always seemed to work. Upon getting to the party, the disco, or the carnival fed at Texaco Sports Club, Ronald would head east, and we would head west. We both enjoyed the same genre of music, R&B, and we both loved to dance. We celebrated each other's achievements, which included when I graduated from Napa Rima Girls High School, she was my plus one. And when she graduated from St. Peter's, I was there. She has always been there for me. And as we grew older, the fr friendship grew stronger. We talked about anything and everything. We shared hundreds of secrets, which remain secrets to this day. Only being 18 days apart or in birth, we decided to have a 21st birthday party together. My mother had no problem with it, but my dad, he would um, periodically mention, you were born by yourself. Why you want to share your spotlight? And my reply will always be, Karen is my friend, and that's what friends do. We share. Needless to say, Karen and I had a 21st birthday party and the birthday celebrations, and it was a success. We also shared a dream of travel and living abroad. So on August 24th, 1984, I left to go to school in the United States. And when it was time to say goodbye to my writing partner, I didn't feel sad, unhappy, or despondent. I knew we were going to keep in touch. And that we did. She would leave Trinidad a few years later and head to the UK to continue her studies. And you know what we did? We kept in touch. We continued to write on a regular basis. The years went on and the friendship continued. And when Karen got married in this church to Gregory, I was unable to attend the wedding. My student visa had expired, so I couldn't come for her wedding. It hurt. It hurt so bad that I was not there to support her on her big day. It hurt, it simply hurt to not be there for my friend. But she didn't manage, she did manage, however, to include my younger sister in her bridal party, Luann. So that was the closest thing to me being there. Eventually, I was able to travel and one of the most incredible memories I have, and I will always continue to have, is the day, the evening, whenever I touch down at that airport, the next day, Karen will be coming up the steps of 91 Cypress Avenue. and we will just pick up where we left off. She will come every day that I'm here. My buddy, my friend. And before I wrap up, I want to thank you, Kieran. I want to thank you, Costa, her two sons, her pride, her joy. I pray and I ask God to watch over you both, protect you, and guide you. To Kijana, just know that Granny loved you immensely. 
to Annette and Rob. Thank you for walking along with my friends. Or should I say, thank you for walking along with our friend. She went in her final years upon this earth. I was not able to be here for her as I would have liked to be. But you both eased my worry and my concern. And before I end, I would also add to the list of pseudonames and titles a friend, as a friend, as a confidant. I also want to include my travel buddy. Karen was excited to see the world. She started the journey we promised each other that we would travel. We started, but God decided he needed his angel more. So fly high, my friend, until we meet again.
First reading, a reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, a rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheep that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up the death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks. We this is dedicated song, song of prayer. Thank you. 
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 50 to 58. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability, and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, immovable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. House, there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the living God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let me take this opportunity again, just in case you missed it in the first place, to extend our deepest sympathies on behalf of Karen's church family on her passing. We come together 
in this place for the churching the last rites of someone. I have not encountered any experience, even among people who during their last days suffered or may have had dementia. Someone who may have had cancer and therefore was in agony, may have been receiving um, drugs to suppress the, the pain. Yet, in every instance, family and friends said, I wish we had a bit more time. I wish, if only, if only. But it is what it is. And her mortal remains are in the center aisle. But my profound sense from what I heard and some what of you have shared is that the current that you knew is gone. She is not here. That person who brought so much joy and so much gladness, so much vivacity, that spirit is gone. It has gone somewhere, but it's not in that box. Because you spoke to all of us about someone who lived life to the fullest, someone who enjoyed their relationships, someone who, for whom relationships were important. And therefore, across the years and across the miles, continued to maintain those relationships and express a love which passes all understanding for so many years. And for that, I am sure that you will miss her. No two ways about it. Had she been 110, you would still miss her. You may even have missed her more because you had more time with her. It doesn't make any, it doesn't get any easier. Recently, I went to the hospital and commiserated with a couple who had lost a newborn. Baby was born prematurely and, of course, had to be in NICU. Those people who were in the medical, the neonatal intensive care unit. They didn't get a chance to form the kinds of relationships that you have spoken about over the years. But the love, nonetheless, was there. And so, as they said, said farewell to that loved one, there was pain in their hearts. How? We don't understand. But in a way, we do. Because you said here that Karen lived her life because there was a kind of innate understanding that we were meant for more, we were meant for better, we were meant for something more, and that she belonged to God. And in that sense, she was on loan to us. And so we read from John chapter 14, verse 1 to 6, in which Jesus Christ says, in my Father's house there are many dwelling places. We know it. I don't have to go over with you. We understand as we make our journey that we are not here forever. We enjoy it, we have fun, and we have developed relationships with loved ones. And we have an opportunity to heal in those relationships that are not wholesome. I really did enjoy the account, brief as it might have been, about her own relationship, marital relationship, which if I understand it correctly, failed in the traditional sense. But she managed nonetheless that the essence of the relationship continued so that her children would not feel the effects of a broken marriage. She was able to come together for the interest and in the interest of those whom she loved. 
What a powerful testimony. And so we go back to John's Gospel. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places because we must always bear in mind, all of us, that that is what we were intended for. Regardless of how much you enjoy your life, if there's one of you or a few of you who know for sure that you will be here forever in this place and in the flesh, come and talk to me after the series. I would like, I'd love to know. I'd love to know how that is, how that works, and how that feels. And while you're doing that, you must tell me how you're going to manage you in old age with pain. We were meant to use the time that we have to prepare our lives for something else, something better, made in God's image to be called back to him. But more than that, so much more than that, we were intended to share our understanding of the nature of God and the relationship that he offers to us with each other. That's why parenting is so important. Then. That's why we must overcome brokenness so that we can share, so that we can understand and make God real to the people who come into our lives. Guess what? That's easier said than done. Preachers stand up and they talk to you all about these things. But then we go outside and we face the real world in our tradition and in other traditions, the traditional denominations. During this time, we celebrate the season after Pentecost. And in that time, the church, the church that Jesus Christ founded, gave us the Holy Spirit, expects us to grow, and express, expects us to demonstrate that growth in our own lives and the lives of others. In his letter to the Galatians, and Paul introduces the Galatians with an interesting um, um, statement, which I love. And one of the things that I go to. In the first chapter of his letter to the Galatians, verse 6, he says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. My dear brothers and sisters, that's our reality. It seems almost that as a human species, with all the gifts that we have, and all the gifts that we profess, and all the beauty of the relationships that we had. Remember Karen's friend, connecting over many years, looking out for each other. But in our world, in our contemporary society in particular, it almost as though we have a love affair with pain and hurt and abuse. And we do it to each other. We abuse old, young, vulnerable. We take advantage of situations for our own benefit, or so we believe. And we continue in relationships in pain and hurt. And we continue in situations which we can't seem to escape. We go back into those. You don't believe me? Didn't study that in a theological book. Ask any abused person in a relationship. Ask any of your psychologists. Why do people go back into those things and get back to the extent of of perhaps even death, certainly pain, certainly anguish, dreaming of a better day and going back into the situations. So now, when we have a church service in the night, remember back in the day when we had midnight service and the church was full? Now, I'm not selling church, eh? and I'm not selling church, just using an example. But back in the day, you couldn't get a seat in a midnight service. But now, you can lie down on the pew. You 
because it has space. In any case, some of us have to say, well, no, we're not having the, mid the midnight service again because nobody will come. And in any case, it's dangerous. What, what have we done as a people, as God's people, made in his image to reach the stage that we have? When do we cry out and say, stop? This is not making any sense. If the food we eat, we look at the way in which our environment is caving in on us. These days, in my grandmother's house, you know, we just used to open the windows. Now, if you don't have an air conditioning unit, well, tough luck. Because it's hot. It's hot. But we've done some of that for ourselves. We've done it to ourselves. Our, 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 our love of, of a kind of relationship situation with each other and with God's creation in which we dream of what God has promised us, but we eke out the things that perhaps give us the most dis-ease and we continue to pray that it will get better. I'm bringing these things to your attention, my dear brothers and sisters, because my sense is that somehow or another, somewhere along the, the, the road, Karen got it. She understood deeply that what was more important than anything else was the relationship that we have with God and each other. And whatever the condition of her life, whatever she may have endured, easy or difficult, her relationships were going to pervade. Maybe it has something to do with being part of the Faisabad community. I don't know. People from Faisabad say, no, that's the best place on the planet to live. So when you, go, when you come from Faisabad, you understand. My good friend, I know if you see here today, um, Thomas Campbell, I always used to celebrate. Yes, Faisabad is the place. Whatever it is, I want to take you to Galatians as Paul goes on, as he points out that somewhere along the line, you were told, you were informed by the gospel, the God spell, the good news, that there's something special waiting for you and for me, and that we have an opportunity how much ever we enjoy this place or how, however painful it has been, but to have something better. And we were created for, for it. And God is waiting on us. But in, as we make our choices in our day, and as we consider what the church has done in declaring this season, the season after Pentecost, as where we have God's Holy Spirit, Paul points us to the fruit of the Spirit. Paul points us to what happens in our lives, the manifestation of our lives, when God's Spirit dwells inside of us. And he talks about the fruit of the Spirit are love and joy and peace and patience. and kindness and generosity and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Those of you who knew Karen, does that sound like does that sound like her? A bit? Gentleness, self-control, patience, and kindness, building relationships, God's Holy Spirit shining through in her life to others. And because of that, she touched so many lives. And you are here today as a testimony of that. And there are others who may not be here, who wish that they were here, and therefore we are live streaming to them. 
so that they could participate virtually. We want to hold on to that and we want that each and every single one of us understands that peace and that joy and that gentleness, that looking out for us. What a world that could be when every one of us in every sphere, in every corner would look out for each other. The other day I was driving my vehicle and I was tired and I wasn't paying attention. So I would reverse it to come out and I hit a guy. <laughs> my bad. And I came outside and I said, Sir, I'm sorry, I really am. I wasn't paying attention, my fault. I'll pay to fix your vehicle. That's not, that's not to say that I have money, eh? I don't, but the debt is mine. And we got to talking, and he says, okay, just get the paint, and I will pay for the labor. And we shook hands, and we smiled at each other, and we left as friends. No, I don't mean I could go and hit his vehicle again, eh? He wouldn't take it so, so well on this occasion. But there used to be an occasion in which we could do those kinds of things. My dear grandmother, many years ago, now dead and gone, used to be say, she used to, on Sundays, she would send us out to the village where she lived with some hops and something inside of it, whether it is bread, peanut butter, I don't know what they used to have. We just used to go and deliver. And in my innocent youth, I said, but granny, you feed any poor, but you poor. And she used to smile and say, don't mind. Don't mind. Because we shared, because we cared, because we understood that whatever we're going through, we're going through together. And we could carry whatever we had to carry because we had each other. Does that sound like Karen? And therefore she understood something Karen understood something that the world is in short supply of and in great need of today. And so it is my prayer that those of you who have experienced Karen's love and Karen's kindness and Karen's faithfulness and Karen's patience and Karen's gentleness and Karen's self-control. And maybe she, got, she went off the went off the deep end a couple of times, eh? Maybe. Maybe. But on balance, on balance, your memory is of a loving, supporting person whom you love dearly and whom you say today by your presence that we love her also. And we thank God for her life. And we remember that if she was an angel to us, God take back his angel. But you have the experience, therefore you can continue. And all of us need to be somebody's angel. Now, right now, in a world badly in need of that kindness, of that patience, of that gentleness, of that self-control. Paul's letter to the Galatians. And so it is my prayer that as we lay Karen's mortal re remains to rest, as we say goodbye to her physical body, that we are mindful that she remains with us because she has planted herself in our hearts and therefore we have that to celebrate for the rest of our lives. And Karen would want us to go out into the world and through our relationship, spread God's love, and spread God's Holy Spirit into all to whom we will come in contact. That is the greatest privilege, tribute, that we can pay to a dear sister, a loved one, a friend, a mother, an aunt, a great aunt, however we, we have related to her. Thank you, God for sharing us.
sharing her with us. Thank you, Lord. And may we imitate her example as she imitated the example of Jesus Christ so that we all are followers, we are all disciples of our Lord and Savior as we continue our journey until one day we too lie like Karen, but having left this world a better place. That is the journey. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so it's time to stand to declare the faith we need and the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us with confidence and hope and confess the faith in which we were baptized as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven. I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virginia. He suffered and not just fired, was crucified and died in his belly. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he was again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. We continue in prayer for those with the Book of Common Prayer and the funeral booklet be on page 367. And for those without the response will be hear us, Lord. For Sister Karen, let us pray to the Lord Christ who said, I am a resurrection and I am life. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Karen and dry the tears of those who weep. Hear yes, us, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in your sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raised the dead to life Raise our sister Karen to eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister Karen to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints. Hear us, Lord. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Hear us, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrows at the death of our sister Karen. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you, our sister Karen, who was reborn by the water and the spirit of holy baptism. Grant to her death and recall to us your victory over death, and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us the free and faith to follow the way you have led the way, the way you live and live in the Father and the Holy Spirit, to the ages of ages. We are the body of Christ, by the ones who are to all baptized into one body, and have all the means to drink of the one spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace, and let us come on time. The peace of the Lord be all of with you. Let us now give each other the peace of God, as we express God's peace to each other, the Christ in you, which is the Christ. Amen. Amen. 
towards whom you wish.
have given us. This bread, this wine, this money. With them we offer ourselves our lives and our will. To become through your Holy Spirit a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice. As this bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ, so may we and all your people become the channels of your love to the same Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and I've got a joy to take all those and everywhere to give you thanks, Father Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and comforts us with the blessed hope of eternal life. For to your faithful people, O Lord, the life is changed, not ending. And when our mortal body lies in death, there is prepared for us a dwelling place eternal in the heavens. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and our angels, and with all the company of heaven, we forever sing this thing to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our mind. Heaven is the Lord of your glory, who is in the Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who is in the heights. Sovereign Lord and Father, to you be glory and praise forever. In your boundless wisdom, you brought creation into being. In your great love and passion, as in your image. In your tender compassion, you sent your Son. Jesus Christ, our Savior, the share of human nature, and the power of the Holy Spirit, who overcame the power of sin and death, and brought your people to new growth in the presence of your new creation. On the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he gave thanks to you, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this for you. This is my body, blood, and the covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to the command of your daily beloved Son, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer you, Father, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. Send your Holy Spirit and his gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, Jesus, our Lord, bringing up. As we partake of this holy food and new and unending life, May your Holy Spirit establish us as a royal priesthood with the blessed Virgin Mary and all your sons and daughters who share in your eternal inheritance through Jesus Christ our Lord. With him and in him and through him by the power of the Holy Spirit, we wish to Father Almighty with all who stand before you will live in heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, honor, and glory of God, yours forever. As our Savior has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day of the bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. And deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, power, and glory of us, now and forever. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Oh, and then we are one body, because we have shared in one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and you save us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and you save us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls, please, and be satisfied. 
we will see God sovereignly brings.
or post communion, right? For those of you who say the distributed booklets on page 371, we sit together, Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love, you have fed us the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and have given us the four days of your heavenly language. Grant that this sacrament may be to us a comfort and affliction and a pledge of our identity, our inheritance in that kingdom where it is rooted. Neither sad sorrow nor cry, but the fullness of joy for your saints through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Oke. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. <clears throat> like a shadow, he flees and never says. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins. And at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. <coughs> Ensure uncertain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God, our sister Karen, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust and we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor that when your well beloved son shall come again in judgment both this our sister karen and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight grant this for the sake of your son jesus christ our lord amen Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may be ha have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in joyful expectation of eternal life with whom those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear, Lord, the prayers of your people as we remember before you, Karen, our sister, and grant that we who confess your name on earth may with her be made perfect in that in the kingdom of your glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Most merciful Father and Lord of all life, we praise you that men are made in your image and reflect your truth and light. We thank you for the life of your daughter Karen, for the love and mercy she received from you and showed among us. Above all, we rejoice at your great, gracious promise to all your servants, living and departed, that we shall rise again at the coming of Christ. And we ask that in due time we may share with our sister Karen that clearer vision when we shall see your face in the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. May she and all the faithful the people departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and give her his peace. Unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us flawless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Oh, 